Hello to all of our St. George Sunday School students. As you may know, my name is Bessie Despotis and I'm the fourth and fifth grade teacher at St. George, as well as Sunday School Director here. Today we're going to be doing a lesson on the different parts of the church. You may notice that when you enter our church or when you enter other churches that you may visit, you'll see a similar pattern in all the churches. The church is divided into three areas. The first area, when you walk into the church, is called the narthex. Here's where you light the candles and say a little prayer. You enter the church, and the second part is called the nave, where we here in the United States have pews, and we sit during the divine liturgy. And towards the back of the church is where what's called the sanctuary. The sanctuary is divided from the nave by something called the Iconostasion. The Iconostasion has three doors, a central door and two side doors, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. The narthex is the entrance where you make an offering, receive a candle and light it before an icon and offer a personal prayer before joining the rest of the people in the church. Centuries ago, this was the place where unbaptized learners remained during the service. Today, the beginning of the baptismal service begins here and proceeds to the nave. Next, we have the nave. The nave is the large central area of the church. Here we gather to worship and pray. Today, most churches in this country have pews. The old custom is not to have any seats. On the right side of the nave, you'll find the bishop's throne. So when the bishop comes and visits, oftentimes you'll see them here. On the left side is the pulpit from which the gospel is proclaimed and the sermon is given. The cantors or the psaltis are also in the nave. Next, we have the sanctuary, which is separated by the nave from the uh, by the iconostasion. The sanctuary contains the holy altar. Behind the holy altar is a large cross painted with the figure of Christ. Above the sanctuary is the apse. There, there's a large icon of the Theotokos and the Christ child. The sanctuary contains the holy altar. The altar or the holy table is the heart and focal point of the Orthodox Church. It is here that the gifts of bread and wine are offered and turned into the body and blood of Christ. The altar is usually square in shape. It stands away from the wall and is covered with cloths. When the divine liturgy is not being celebrated, the Book of Gospels rests on the altar. A tabernacle with reserved Holy Communion for the sick or dying is set upon the altar. High above the church in the ceiling or dome is the icon of the Christ the Almighty. As we talked about, the Iconostasion, which separates the nave from the sanctuary, is a panel of icons. And most iconostasios have the same pattern. Uh, there's three entrances which are used during the services. The central entrance, which are the royal doors, conceals the altar when services are not being celebrated. The royal doors are only used by clergymen during services. It symbolizes the tomb of Christ. Then we have the side doors here and here call the deacon doors. For us, Orthodox Christians, the altar is paradise, the holy of holies, where the greatest miracle on earth happens. Our offering of bread and wine becomes the holy body and blood of Jesus Christ our God. All right, so as we said, most churches have the same pattern. So you'll notice that the icon of Christ is always to the right of the central door, the royal doors. The mother of God, the Theotokos, is to the left of the royal doors. 
Saint John the Baptist is always next to Christ. The patron saint of the church, and in our case, Saint George, is next to the Theotokos. The Archangel Michael stands guard at the left door as he was positioned after the fall with his sword to protect paradise. Here, the priest always exits the altar, making his procession. The Archangel Gabriel stands at the door on the right and reopens paradise to all repentant believers. So here is where the priest enters back into the altar or paradise. And just to recap, you have the G Jesus to the right of the doors, the Theotokos to the left of the, the royal doors, John the Baptist to the right of Jesus, the patron saint of the church to the left of the Theotokos, the Archangel Gabriel to enter the altar, and the Archangel Michael to exit the altar. So, um, next time you come to St. George or maybe visit another Greek Orthodox church, take a second to recognize what each church has in common. I hope you enjoyed learning about the parts of the church. I've included a couple of exercises in the email sent to each Sunday school family. One is a project involving printing out and cutting icons, which can be matched to the correct area on the Iconostasion. The other is a crossword with clues involving the lesson learned today. I hope you enjoy, and if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact myself, Father James, or any of the other Sunday school teachers. Thank you so much.